Magic the Gathering can be an incredibly overwhelming game to learn, but there's only one thing that's more overwhelming, social anxiety. Thankfully, most game stores have a weekly event that kind of acts as like a bit of a social catalyst that gets people together to play the game. That means I'm talking about Friday Night Magic. Now, if you're brand new to Magic the Gathering, chances are you've heard of Friday Night Magic or FNM, if not directly, at least passively. So we're gonna run through some of the do's and don'ts of FNM so that way you can find a play group that you enjoy and have more fun during your games. But first, Typically, FNM is Draft Night, which is a specific format of Magic the Gathering that requires either a shop or someone to host. However, other popular, more casual formats such as Commander have been popping up, so a lot of game stores also host things for Popper, Commander, Standard, uh, Cube, etc. So even though going to FNM for drafting is typically the primary motivator, don't feel like that you have to go draft if you want to go to FNM. It's still important to research some of your game stores just because some require money, some don't, my game store doesn't, but some places require like five bucks. But here are some general best practices for your first FNM. Number one, for the love of God, please wear deodorant. Everyone is in close proximity. Just be courteous. If you want to be extra courteous, go ahead and brush your teeth as well, because again, you're sitting across from people. But aside from that, please just be a little courteous. Number two, don't feel like you have to be an expert player. I go weekly and I am an idiot. Now, it is a good idea to have a general understanding of how the game works, but most experienced players are more than willing to help you through the process. And if you go into Friday Night Magic with a question slash curiosity mindset, most people are more than willing to help to the best of their abilities. And if you do end up having a question that like no one can answer, there's always judges. And number three, bring a pre-constructed deck. Now this one isn't particularly a mandatory thing just because most people when they go to Friday Night Magic bring several decks that they can play with. So most people are more than willing to loan out their decks. But the reason why I recommend getting at least a pre-con is so that way you can familiarize yourself with what kind of play styles you resonate with. And also having like a pre-constructed deck kind of allows you to be a little more familiar with the game both during gameplay and outside of gameplay. Now I recommend the Lateral Blade of Elves pre-con just because I feel like it's great for beginning players. Plus there's a whole bunch of upgrade lists that range from optimized to CEDH level. So you can kind of find what kind of power level you enjoy. And also it gives you plenty of room to evolve as a player. I also typically recommend bringing a friend with you and also going with the mindset of a learning experience just because both of these elements take a lot of the pressure off and it gives you a lot of good conversation while you might be waiting for games. And if you don't have anyone to go with you and you do suffer from social anxiety, just ask yourself these three questions. What's the worst thing that can happen? What's the best thing that can happen? And what's realistically going to happen? This can help your brain stay grounded and not be anxious or pressured by either of the extremes. Now the hard part's over, you're at the card shop and now you're looking for games. Now, if you're by yourself, most people will ask if you're looking for a game. At that point, then that's just social skills and then you're off to the races. Just focus on having fun and the same goes if you have a friend with you. Um, again, it just kind of takes the pressure off and you have some conversation in the interim. Now, unfortunately, like in every hobby, you do have some gatekeepers and you do have the people that take it a little bit more intense or extreme. And to that point, there is a time and a place to take the game seriously, but in a casual format or in a casual situation, it's not that time or place. And you can tell if you're playing against one of these people just because you can kind of feel the fun get sucked from the game. And they tend to get butt hurt very, very easily, especially if they are either losing or their decks are not performing well. And it's also worth noting that a lot of these players do tend to get in pretty heated arguments and they focus on being right as opposed to trying to figure out how the game works. And just kind of keep in mind that this person is an outlier. Most Magic the Gathering players are super chill and easygoing, and you can always switch pods or switch groups if you want. And if you find yourself getting into arguments or leaving frustrated, maybe you should reconsider how you approach gameplay. Food for thought. Now the main takeaway I want to give you is just to go in, have fun, and don't have too high of expectations. Just keep it nice and casual and it's fun to share the experience with people who enjoy the same game as you. But if you're also trying to embrace your general nerdiness, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You do get the fun little animation whenever you click the button. And if you are newer to Magic and you want to bring a deck with you but you don't want to buy a pre-con, make sure to check out this video because this was the first deck that I built and I find it's a really good introductory deck for beginners. Or just check out any of the deck tech series just because you might find a playstyle that resonates with you.